Just a few short years ago, Shane Buchel was seen as the savior of Texas football, and he very much was at one point. But a few bad performances and injuries later, Shane found himself on the bench behind Sam Ellinger, and it was time for him to find a new college football home. In today's video, we'll be talking about the inspiring story of Shane Bouchelle and how he saved his football career at SMU. If you love college football, then you are absolutely going to love this channel. So why not take a quick moment to subscribe and help me reach 4,000 subscribers by the end of August. Every like, share, comment, and even just staying till the end will help the channel grow, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Let me know who I should do next down in the comment section. Now let's get started with the comeback story of Shane Bouchelle. Shane was born and raised in the fertile football grounds of Texas, but he didn't exactly always sport the burnt orange. His entire family was made up of diehard Oklahoma Sooners fans, so it was kind of a miracle things played out the way they did. It also didn't help that his father, Steve, was an MLB player for 11 years and even played for the Texas Rangers. Despite the natural baseball talent in the family, Shane grew up loving the game of football. He was the youngest sibling and a fierce competitor always getting upset when he lost anything, and always challenging his brothers and sisters to rematches. He would end up going to Arlington Lamar High School, and he not only worked hard on the field, but also in the classroom. He was a high school football star, and also got a 4.0 GPA in high school. Shane was a natural leader, and quarterback came easy to him. He dominated other high schools from all over the state, and he would go on to put up 6,739 passing yards, 73 touchdowns, and was named to the Texas High School All-Football State Team twice. When it came time for recruiting, many people believed it would come down to two schools, Stanford and Oklahoma. Stanford was his father's alma mater, and Oklahoma is where all four of his siblings ended up going to college. The Sooners offered Shane, and he was one of the best high school quarterbacks in the country, so it really was an option. From an outside perspective, it seemed like Oklahoma would be the favorite, but boy were people wrong. Dead wrong. Shane visited Texas' campus eight times, and his mom secretly began to fall in love with the place. The reason the mom loved it so much was because the people there were really nice, and every time they visited, they met with head coach Charlie Strong, and during the four visits he took to Oklahoma, she never met the head coach once. Sam really liked Charlie Strong, the attention he got from the coaching staff, the prestige of Longhorn Nation, and how he could potentially play from the very beginning. He ended up committing to Texas, and a lot of people, including his family, were shocked. According to 24-7 Sports, Buchel was a four-star recruit, a number three dual threat quarterback, and the 182nd best player in the class of 2016. Shane decided to enroll early and join the team for spring practice. Shane immediately fit in with the Texas system, and the fan base was ultra hyped after he threw for 299 yards and two touchdowns in only the first half of their spring game. With Tyrone Swoops being the only other competitor, it looked like Shane was potentially going to have a chance to start as a true freshman. Going into the 2016 season, Texas was in their third year under head coach Charlie Strong, and the Longhorns were finally expected to take that next step. Buchel was going to be on college football's biggest stage from the get-go, as the Longhorns were set to play Notre Dame under the lights week one. In that game, Shane made his first career start, and he looked like the quarterback that was going to bring them back. In what would become one of the most memorable games of the decade, Texas was declared back after a 50-47 overtime win against the Fighting Irish. In that game, Buchel threw for 280 yards and two touchdowns. Not bad for the first true freshman to start since 1947. The following week, he threw for four more touchdowns against UTEP, and he looked really good. Now they had another test in Cal. This game would show some of the Texas' flaws, as they lost a close game, and Shane struggled. This would be the start of a tough stretch for him in the Longhorns, as they would lose four of their next five games, and Buchel's only good game came in a close loss to Oklahoma. After a win over number 8 Baylor in Texas Tech, the team went back to struggling as they lost to TCU, number 16 West Virginia, and um, Kansas. The Longhorns go 5-7 on the year, and Charlie Strong was as good as gone. Shane did well as a true freshman as he threw for 2,958 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. He would need to improve as a sophomore, but all the tools and the ability were present in Shane for him to become the next great Texas quarterback. Oh yeah, and that Notre Dame team they beat actually ended up being really terrible. Going into 2017, Texas hired former Ohio State offensive coordinator and Houston head coach Tom Herman to take over the coaching duties and hopefully bring them back to national relevancy. Shane was the starting quarterback, but they didn't have a go-to running back or a star receiver yet. As usual though, Texas was a little bit overrated going into the 2017 season, and they began ranked number 23 in the country. The first game would be a home game against Maryland, and the Terrapins put Texas back in their place as they were upset in Austin and the media jumped all over that. 
In that game, Shane threw for 375 yards and two touchdowns, but this Texas team just wasn't that good, at least at the moment. Things got worse as Shane was injured and missed their next game against San Jose State and their loss to USC. At least he was back for the road game against Iowa State, but he would go down with an injury in the middle of the game. From there, Sam Ellinger was thrown into the starting position and started against both Kansas State and Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry. After Sam went down in the fourth quarter against the Sooners, Shane was inserted and completed two passes in their loss. He would return to the starting spot against TCU, Baylor, and Kansas, but despite throwing for over 250 yards in all three of those games, he never threw for more than one touchdown. Shane was still good, but he wasn't flashy and he wasn't really putting up big numbers. Because of that, he was benched in favor of Ellinger for the West Virginia game and the Texas Tech game. The Longhorns ended up finishing the regular season at 6-6 six and six and got a bid to play in the Texas Bowl. They were matched up against my Missouri Tigers in that game, and Texas was clearly the better team from the start. The Longhorns won, and Tom Herman famously mocked Drew Locke. As a sophomore, Shane battled injuries and inconsistency, as he only threw for 1,350 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions, while losing his starting job to Sam Ellinger. He would need to beat out Sam in the offseason, or his future in Austin would be in jeopardy. Well, it didn't exactly happen, as Sam was both the better quarterback, and the entire fan base wanted him to be the future. Despite that, Shane still loved his school and worked hard to become the best backup quarterback he could be. Sam was the starter, but he would get the chance to see the field again. After Ellinger went down with a shoulder injury, Shane jumped in and led the Longhorns to a win over Baylor. A few weeks later, Sam injured his shoulder and Shane once again was put in the game and he led them to a win over Iowa State. Because he had only played in two games, he was able to redshirt and he was also going to be able to graduate early. Clearly, he was just seen as a backup option now, so he was going to explore other options because he was too good to sit on the bench for the next two years. His break came when SMU quarterback Ben Hicks transferred to Arkansas to join his old head coach Chad Morris. Shane saw the opportunity to play football for a local school in a pretty solid conference, so he decided to grad transfer to SMU. He's going to have two years to play, and he was going to be the starting quarterback. He would have a chance to leave a legacy at a school that actually had a pretty rich history and had been struggling the last few years. Going into the 2019 season, the Mustangs were going to be in their second season under head coach Sonny Dykes, and the team actually returned a ton of wide receiver talent for Shane to throw the ball to. James Prochet and Reggie Robertson Jr. were two upperclassmen wideouts who were both named to the preseason watch list for multiple awards and became stars. They had a breakout star running back in Xavier Jones, and they had nabbed Notre Dame transfer CJ Sanders. Despite an obvious influx of talent, the Mustangs were still picked to finish fourth in the American Athletic West division but boy, would they surprise the people. They opened up the season with a road game against Arkansas State and ended up being a one-possession win. Shane threw for 360 yards in, the in his SMU debut, but the team was going to need to be better than that. Against another Texas quarterback legend in Mason Fine, Shane threw for 292 yards and three touchdowns against North Texas. They easily beat Texas State, and now they had a huge game against their arch-rival TCU. The Horned Frogs came in the game ranked number 25 in the country and were expected to easily take care of the Mustangs at home. It wasn't the case though, as SMU gave them a game and won 41-38 after Buchel threw for 288 yards and two touchdowns. This was a monumental win for SMU, and the first time they had beaten the Horned Frogs in eight years. After another road win against USF, the Mustangs jumped into the top 25 and were 5-0. Shane led them to a triple overtime thriller against Tulsa, threw for 457 yards and six touchdowns in a win over Temple, and also led them to a close win over Houston. SMU was 7-0. This was the most hype SMU had experienced in a long, long time, and they're ranked number 15 in the country. Now they'd have their toughest remaining game on the schedule, a road test against number 24 Memphis. College game day visited the city of Memphis, and this is one of the biggest games in American Athletic Conference history. In one of the most exciting and entertaining games I've ever seen, Memphis took SMU down by one score and ended the Mustangs' miracle season. They would bounce back and beat East Carolina, but a loss to Navy ended their chances at making the championship game. The Mustangs would finish the regular season at 10-2 and got a bid to play in the Boca Raton Bowl. They'd end up losing to Florida Atlantic, but Shane had a spectacular season. He went on to throw for 3,929 yards, 34 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions as he led SMU to a 10-win season and he was named to the first team All-AAC. Going into his senior year, SMU is expected to be pretty good and Shane is considered a second or third day NFL draft pick for the 2021 NFL Draft. It's also worth noting that Shane was really good at baseball too, as he was actually drafted in the MLB Draft. Today's video was supposed to be a quick write-up and wasn't supposed to be this long, but I really enjoyed Shane's story and I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did. 
If you are a Texas fan, let me know what you think of Shane down below, and smash that like button if you want to help my channel grow. Drop a video suggestion down in the comment section, and if you are new, be sure to subscribe and help me reach 4,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you are still here, check out my video about another Texas legend in Kenny Hill and all my other college football player story videos. Until next time though, peace.